Welcome to the Weekly Option, the podcast for people interested in trading stock options. Each week, we cover trade ideas and opportunities in the stock market right now. Whether you're a beginner, a professional, or just curious about options, this is the show for you. Let's get started. Welcome to the Weekly Option. This is episode 152 on February 5th, 2021. I'm your host, Eric, and in this week's show, we will cover the trades from last week on Orbital Energy Group, Canopy Growth Corporation, and Apple. And we discussed three new trades on Alpha Pro Tech, Ford Motor Company, and Zynga Inc. Now, it's always great to hear from listeners. If you have any questions about the trades presented here, or even about your own positions, feel free to email me. You can email questions to eric at theweeklyoption.com. That's E-R-I-C at theweeklyoption.com. And I've also created a short video series to teach you all the basics of option trading that you'll need to know to be able to follow along with me on this show. You can visit our website and click on the videos tab to watch them or visit the YouTube channel for the weekly option. After a brief pause last week, the equity markets rallied back to another high. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 1,165 points, closing the week at 31,148 points. The S&P 500 index grew 172 points, ending the week at 3,886 points. And now it's time for the topic of the week. The topic this week is a bit of a walk through what happens at expiration if you own an in-the-money equity options. Now, most equity options in the United States expire into stock. This means that if you own a call option that expires in the money, you will receive stock for this trade. This means also that you need to have the capital to purchase 100 shares of stock per option that you have in the money. And the shares will be discounted back to the strike price of the call option. For instance, let's say I have a $15 call option and the stock ends up expiring at $15.40. That's great. I end up buying 100 shares of stock uh, for $15 and that stock right off the bat has 40 cents of profit in it. So that's the way the math works. You will collect the gain when you sell the stock. And I often talk about intrinsic value both on the show and uh, when I'm looking at options with other friends and it typically comes through discounted stock. If you own a put option, you will be shorting the stock at the strike price, which should be above the current price. Let's keep that example again with a strike of $15. Let's say that the stock was trading for $14.60. So your put option would actually be 40 cents in the money. What ends up happening is you end up shorting stock at $15, which still means that you lock in or you have a 40 cents profit. You have 40 cents gain in that stock. It's not like they give you cash for the option. So one of the things that happened to me to make me think about this is that I have a call spread that expired today. It was a weekly option that expired today, February 5th, and I paid 30 cents for an in-the-money call spread that was 50 cents wide, and the stock finished 40 cents higher than the call option that I own, but 10 cents below the short call, the call spread, the rather the call that I had sold. So the short call expired worthless, and the long call has 40 cents of intrinsic value. The brokerage firm does not credit my account for the 10 cents per spread because I paid 30 cents and I'm going to exit at 40 cents. Instead, I get to buy 100 shares of stock priced at the strike price. To capture my profit, I'm going to have to sell those shares of stock on Monday morning. I can keep the shares in hopes that it will go higher, uh, but that honestly is a different trade and requires a different uh, sort of thesis. But either way, the options will expire and I'm going to be left with stock in my account at the end of this weekend. Now, to avoid this scenario, you can always sell the options prior to expiration. So if you have the the capital, of course, to take the stock, it's only a small inconvenience to lock in the rewards from a good trade. And if you have an account with less capital, and I know some people start off trading options with less capital in their account, 
you simply need to exit the trade prior to expiration. You might have to give up a penny or two of profit, but that's better than creating a margin call that you can't afford. So the brokerage companies are typically good. They're pretty good about protecting people from getting in over their heads with option expiration too. So it helps if you have a if you use a brokerage account that is built for option trading. I certainly have a few favorites. That's it for the topic of the week. Hopefully that helps a few of you out. It might actually uh, answer. I know it does answer a few questions I've received in email, which is always what happens to the option at expiration. If you're trading an equity option, there's a good chance that it expires into stock. That also means that if you, let's say you just sell a naked call option, the reason the brokerages require so much more capital is that in theory, the stock can go up to infinity and your account has to be able to afford that because what happens at expiration is if that option is in the money and you sold the option, you're actually going to be getting short stock, a stock that likely is trending higher, possibly even running higher. And we could get into the details of what happened with Robinhood brokerage a week ago and uh, some of the options that that uh, got a little out of control and all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, it all comes back to how you manage expiration and how you protect yourself, how you make sure that you lock in profits. I always talk about this lock in profit limit loss. If you end up having an option that expires and it is in the money and you can't afford the stock, you really are going to be in a jam and your brokerage company is probably going to charge you a nice penny to let you out of that jam. So that's it for this week's topic of the week. Let's go ahead and move into the trade review from last week. And I'm happy this week. I mean, last week with the markets down, we actually had a few losses or some uh, some even trades that are actually uh, pulling higher now, uh, given what happened this week. So uh, sometimes it's it really is good to wait a day or two before making a decision on closing a trade or kind of mitigating losses with an iron condor or something like that. So let's start with the covered call that we looked at. Uh, Orbital Energy Group, symbol O is in Oscar, E is in Echo, G is in Golf. At the time, the stock was trading for $7.78 per share. I looked at buying stock and selling the February 10 call at $1.35, hoping for a return of 45.89% in three weeks. Well, Orbital Energy Group stock rose 90 cents, ending the week at $8.68 per share. The call option that we sold fell 20 cents, leaving us with a net gain of $1.10 for the week. That represents a 14% return on our capital in one week if we were to close this trade. Now, it's rare that stock goes higher and the call option that we sold goes lower. This happened because the market ultimately is telling us that it's less likely that the option is going to finish in the money within the next two weeks. It lost time value, which works in our favor when we because we sold the option. So we wouldn't actually close this trade because it's working and if the stock finishes below ten dollars per share which is the strike on the call option we sold uh in two weeks we can look to sell another call option against those that same stock so uh with the march expiration or maybe later so this trade worked out uh not too bad on uh being able to uh make some profit even though uh the stock ha- uh, the stock hasn't hit our our strike, our option strike. Um, if it does go up another $1.32 over the next week, we will actually capture that uh, 45% return for this trade. Again, this trade is working, so no adjustments are needed. Next up, we looked at a credit spread on Canopy Growth Corporation, symbol C as in Charlie, G as in Golf, C as in Charlie. At the time, the stock was trading for $40.07 per share. I looked at selling the February 40, 39 put spread at $0.40, which can give us a maximum possible loss of $0.60 per spread. Well, CGC shares grew $2.86 this week, closing at $42.93 per share. 
the out of the money put spread we sold is even more out of the money. And if you were to cross the bid ask spread, you would lose 15 cents because the 39 put uh, is being priced 20 cents wide. Now, if you take the midpoint of both options, the spread actually made eight cents over the week. And that sounds more likely given that we sold a put spread and the stock is $2, you know, the stock is 5% higher than it was when we when we entered the trade. So hopefully the stock price will remain high uh, over the next two weeks and this spread will quickly decrease down to zero, allowing us to keep the full premium that we collected for selling it. Thankfully, of course, this trade is working, so no adjustments are needed. In our final trade from last week is a debit spread. We looked at Apple, symbol A as in Alpha, A as in Alpha, P as in Papa, L as in Lima. We looked at the at buying the February 130, 131 call spread for 65 cents. And at the time, of course, stock was trading for $131.96. This spread of finishing in the money gives us a maximum gain of 35 cents or a 53.85% return in three weeks. Well, Apple stock rose $4.80 per share this week, closing at $136.76 per share. The in the money spread that we bought is even more in the money. The spread can be sold at 75 cents right now, marking a 10 cents gain on the week. Of course, if Apple stock continues this trend higher, we can look forward to locking in our 53% return in the next two weeks at expiration. This trade also worked. No adjustments are needed. And you can always add to trades like this. Sometimes we look at, at how we would adjust a losing trade. You may wonder why I don't talk about adding to a profitable trade. The main reason is because a new trade actually needs a new thesis. So if we've lost, we have a new thesis for our trade. But if it's winning, I really want to take my hands off the buy or sell button and just let let it ride, let it close uh, fully with the expectation that I hope with it being in the money. And the good thing about this, unlike the trade that I mentioned in the in the topic of the week, right now this this spread actually has both uh, both options are in the money. So because we own the 130 call and we sold the 131 call, there wouldn't be any stock uh, being delivered because you would have to get long stock for $130. You would automatically have to sell it for $131. That's why we say this is a $1 wide spread and uh, we paid 65 cents for it. And if, if stock were to close right here today, we'd be locking in the 35 cents on this spread. So uh, this was actually a good week. Three uh, profitable trades, uh, mostly because the market went higher. We'll see if we can keep that up with this upcoming week's trades. So let's dive into those two. We're going to start off as usual with the covered call. And this is a company that we looked at uh, uh, probably last summer. Uh, Alpha Pro Tech, symbol A is in Alpha P is in Papa, T is in Tango. The stock ended the week at $16.49 per share. And I'm looking at selling, buying stock and selling the February 16 half call at $1.88, hoping for an 11.46% return in two weeks. Well, you enter this trade by buying APT stock for $16.49 and selling the February 16 half call at $1.88. This trade makes the most money if stock prices finish above $16.50 per share and the break-even price is $14.61 per share. In real terms, the stock purchase would require $1,649 and you would collect $188 for selling the option. Our second trade on the week is a credit spread on Ford Motor Company, symbol F as in Foxtrot. The stock ended the week at $11.51 per share, and I'm looking at selling the February 11 half 11 put spread at 21 cents, which can give us a maximum possible loss of 29 cents per spread. Now you enter this trade by selling the February 11 half put at, at 46 cents and concurrently buying the February 11 put for 25 cents. This is a credit spread because we are selling the spread 
And this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay above $11.50 per share. The break-even price on this trade is $11.29 per share. In real terms, you would receive $21 per spread that you sell and have $29 at risk. Our final trade on the week is a debit spread. Looking at Zynga Inc. Class A, uh, stock symbol ZNGA, Z is in Zulu, N is in November, G is in Golf, A is in Alpha. The stock ended the week at $10.68 per share. I'm looking at buying the February 10, 10 and a half call spread for 31 cents, which can give us a maximum return of 19 cents, or that's a 61.29% return in two weeks. Now you enter this trade by buying the February 10 call for 94 cents and concurrently selling the February 10 half call at 63 cents. This is a debit spread because we are buying the spread and this trade makes the most money if stock prices stay above $10.50 per share. The break even price on this trade is $10.31 per share. In real terms, you'll pay $31 to enter this spread and your maximum gain is $19 per spread. So that's it for the trades for this week. I'm glad that we had, um, honestly, a higher week in the equity markets because that led to three winning trades uh, last week. And of course, with expiration, February expiration being two weeks away, next week we will go ahead and start looking at uh, trades that are in the March expiration month. So that's it. Thank you so much for listening. Also wanted to give a note about the YouTube channel. Uh, I stopped uploading podcast quite a while ago embarrassingly on youtube and we will be catching up with those this week so if you are one of the more than 100 subscribers i have on youtube uh, and that is growing actually pretty quickly that's why i need to update that channel uh, you're going to see a lot of old podcasts being updated being added uh, videos to youtube but just know that we are at episode 152, so if you've listened to all those previous ones, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just start. Keep with the new ones. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing this with the friends. We've been growing every week. Our family is getting bigger, and I love all the emails that I get. So I'll be responding to some of those this weekend as well. Have a fantastic weekend, and as usual, happy trading. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Option Podcast. Please subscribe to our show and visit us at www.theweeklyoption.com. Disclaimer, there is a very high degree of risk involved in trading. The indicators and strategies described in this podcast are for educational purposes only and should not be construed as investment advice. For our full disclaimer, visit our website at www.theweeklyoption.com.